Spiritual Teaching 274 Love Each Other 1. Welcome, pilgrims of all ages, who on this day of grace make a stop on your way to listen to my word and sit at my table spiritually. 2. I calm and calm your heart so that you will listen to me, because in truth I tell you, my word is the path that leads to peace and well-being. 3. But don't come looking for me just to ask me what concerns the flesh. I certainly have the bomb for any one of the evils that afflict you and I have the keys that open the doors of work. But besides that, I bring a flow infinite of goods for the spirit, a stream of wisdom, an inexhaustible spring of spiritual delights. 4. I know that the meaning of this teaching surprises many when they hear it for the first time, and it is because my doctrine speaks to your spirit, it seeks it and turns to it, to offer it a kingdom beyond this world, telling it which is the path that leads to that promised abode. But the man who lives for himself, who loves only his own, who thinks about himself and that he expects everything from the world, when he hears about renunciation, patience, sacrifice, selflessness and charity, he asks himself, if I give everything, who will he give me? If I have so little in this life, why should I give it up? 5. I forgive them because they could not think otherwise their selfishness comes from ignorance. But when you listen more than once and a flash of the light that exists in my word comes to illuminate your spirit, it awakens as from a long dream wondering, confused and surprised, where am I who has spoken to me? 6. My word Meanwhile, continue ceaselessly touching that spirit and gently touching the fibers of that heart, until at last, the pain of the spirit, accumulated for a long time within that being, breaks its dam and overflows in tears, which is confession, awakening to faith, spiritual resurrection and the beginning of elevation towards light, truth and the eternal. 7. This is not the case for everyone, but those who came before the manifestation of my word bringing in their hearts the selfishness love of matter, pride and arguments to deny my spiritual doctrine. When listening to my lesson from this day, they instantly remembered the day when they arrived in darkness and then beheld a light they had never seen before, thought it existed. 8. Many of them are now my most faithful and devoted peasants. 9. My word is a torrent of love that will purify men by preparing them for a better life. 10. Be amazed. I am giving you my teaching that comes to save sinners, through sinful lips too. 11. My plan of universal redemption you cannot include it, but I make known to you a part of it in order that you take part in my work. 12. Only I know the importance of the moment in which the world lives, no human can understand the reality of this time. Humanity from its beginnings has been accumulating stain after stain to cloud its feelings and its spirit creating for himself a sick, restless, and sad life. But the hour of purification has struck. 13. You who have listened to this divine word, have an idea of what is happening at this time and you will pray, exempt yourselves from doing evil and instead do some good. But not all humanity knows the meaning of the events of this time and that is why there is confusion among men, despair, bitterness, hatred, unbridled ambitions, vice, crime, and all low passions. 14. The world needs my word, the peoples and nations need my lessons of love. The ruler, the scientist, the judge, the one who guides spirits, the one who teaches, all need the light of my truth, and that is precisely what I have come at this time, to enlighten man in his spirit, in his heart and in his understanding. 15. Wouldn't you feel satisfied if you served as forerunners to my spirit, to prepare my arrival in hearts, peoples and nations of the earth? And if you want to open gaps and prepare paths, what examples and proofs are you going to give? 16. Do not remove from your mind that my work is perfect, eternal, powerful, clear, luminous. 17. Little disciples, you do not know how spirits love me in the higher mansions, beings that are your brothers. If you knew how they love me, how they serve me and obey me, you would feel very deep regret for your behavior towards your father and you would hasten to form in your heart a shrine to offer it to the one who loves you with perfect love. 18. Let my love be in your heart to make it sensitive to the pain of humanity. It is necessary to know godliness so that you can practice forgiveness and pour out comfort in those who suffer. 
19. Let my word shake your heart so that he can beat with love for his fellow men. 20. Keep my lessons well, because they are the same ones that will serve as weapons in the fight when you have to become the true sours of my truth. 21. Come, I am giving comfort to those who cry, and you cry, some externalizing their crying, others internally, without sobs. 22. I come to collect your pains and take them in peace, I who am the only one who penetrates the depths of the Spirit. Come for your burden, for that burden with which you cannot carry any more. 23. O spirits incarnate in men, you have not come to earth to be overcome by pain, problems, trials, you have come to conquer in vicissitudes and adversities. 24. Do not cry or sleep anymore. The spirit of humanity is in struggle with everyone, with trials, with pains, with passions. 25. You have come to know all the troubles of life you wanted it that way, but your faith, your will and effort can lift you above matter and pain. 26. Do you not understand my word? It is so simple but you are clothed with matter and you do not often reach the bottom of its meaning because you don't analyze it. There will come a day when your spirit, already unwrapped, will review my phrases with delight and understand my teachings, and from that memory sprout a torrent of light for your path. But you will regret not having managed to penetrate into my teaching when you pass through earth, where you so much needed a staff or spiritual support. 27. Record my teachings as much as you can, because if they go from your memory, if they flee from your heart, if you leave them forgotten and abandoned, then you will look for them and you will not find them. It is as if having a source, you abandon it and when thirst embraces you and you go in search of it, you will find that the water has evaporated. 28. If you want to know how to cross through this life without thirst and without fatigue and if you want to enlighten yourself when you are in spirit, yes wish to avoid the pain of embarrassment, take my teaching, let it be indelibly engraved on your being and be the law and the rule of your life. 29. If I called you to account today, what would you do? What would you present for the benefit of your spirit? 30. If your conscience tells you that you have not loved, since that is the law, do you think you are willing to pass from the state human to spiritual? How many spirits that roam in space would like to make themselves heard by men to tell them, not waste your time as I lost it. 31. Truly I tell you that if you study each phrase of mine, you would illuminate the path of your life, because each one of them contains essence, wisdom, eternity. 32. Whoever understands my word, gets to know what has come into the world, knows where it comes from and where it will have to return. 33. He who is saturated with this essence, never again says that this world is only of pain, tears and bitterness, because he knows how to overcome pain, his faith and his love. 34. This world in which man has suffered and cried so much, this home from which many would like to flee from, truly I tell you, that I destined it so that you would fill it with love, but if I asked you all at this time how much you have sown love in it, what would you answer? 35. I want you to tell me if you have understood Christ. He who one day said to you, love one another, see I ask you this question after many centuries of tireless teaching. 36. That is why I tell you at every step that you learn to listen to me, that you learn to be silent when the word speaks, so that the divine seed germinates and flourishes in your heart. 37. I have had infinite patience to wait for you to hear my voice. Why don't you have a little patience when you are under a test? I tell you that he who does not have patience will learn it in this time of restitution. He too is a teacher, although for moments he teaches harshly. Why not learn best of the Divine Master who only teaches with love? 38. Time is not the same for the materialist as for the spiritualized, on one it acts as justice, on another as a blessing, but the light of the centuries has always passed over men, caressing some and awakening to all. 39. When will you allow that light to manifest through your spirit? When will I find the free man in chains and ready to fly to me? 40. There are still many lost travelers, many beings lost in the darkness of ignorance, because they are more flesh than spirit, more lie than truth. 41. 
In them the victor is matter and the vanquished is the spirit. It is these lost whom I come to invite to the feast of the spirit, to the banquet of love, where my heavenly table awaits everyone to free them from so much bitterness and of so much loneliness. 42. I will give you my delicacies, bread, fruits, wine, and honey, which, translated into the real sense, are tenderness, consolation, peace, health, and knowledge. 43. The prayer that you raise in silence is a true spiritual hymn. Its notes merge with those of the righteous and the angels. 44. You bring before my presence the burden of your sins. You present your whole life to me, but I tell you, they exist in the recondite of your being, penalties and restitutions that you ignore and that only I know. But it does not matter that you do not talk to me about all this or ask me for everything that you ignore from your past. I am in everything and nothing escapes my charity, as nothing escapes my justice. 45. Feel my paternal love and let the darkness, the sorrows, the tears dissipate in it. Be strong in me, regain health and peace, return strong to the path of struggle. 46. This is the word you seek, the one that brings comfort, the one that revives and floods with hope. Why do you follow me despite the tests? Why do you not throw the cross from your shoulders? Because in the essence of my word you find an absolute understanding to all your afflictions. 47. Israel, I call the people whom I am gathering around my new revelation, because no one better than me knows what spirit dwells in each of the calls of this third era. 48. Israel has a spiritual meaning and that name I give it to you, so that you keep in mind that you form part of God's people, because Israel does not represent any people on earth, but a world of spirits. 49. That name will arise again on earth, but free from mistakes, in its true essence which is spiritual. 50. You need to know the origin and meaning of that name, you need your faith that you are children of that people is absolute, and you need to have full knowledge of who and why you have received that name so that you can face the attacks that you will receive tomorrow from those who give another meaning to the name of Israel. 51. You are the spiritual people who will truly understand the mystery of the scale that Jacob contemplated with the eyes of the Spirit through a dream. I see you already capable of understanding many lessons and I have come to get together to reveal them to you. 52. The ability to understand comes from evolution, development, and accumulated experience. 53. Truly I tell you, before the worlds were made and before man appeared in the earth, your spirit already existed. These were times of innocence for him, a lifetime in those mansions of preparation, times when the spirit was instructed to inhabit the earth, incarnating in man. 54. Your mind does not receive the impressions or memories of the past from your spirit, because matter is like a thick veil that cannot penetrate the life of the spirit. Which brain could receive the images and impressions that the spirit has collected in the journey of its past? What intelligence could coordinate with ideas human what is incomprehensible to him? 55. For all this I have not allowed you until now to know who you are spiritually or what has been your past. 56. Could you then know in what way I am forming the people of Israel? No, I have only revealed to you what you should know by now and how far you can understand. So I have told you that you are children of the people of Israel, that you belong to him by the spirit and not by the flesh, that your mission is to multiply yourselves to infinity, inviting everyone to penetrate into the bosom of this people and that your destiny is to bring the light to all the worlds. 57. In the first era I gave a man the name of Israel to Jacob to be the trunk of a people which would also be called the same way. That name was spiritual so that that people would remain in the history of humanity as an open book before the Spirit. 58. Those people listened to my voice, they manifested inherent gifts of the Spirit. Received my law through Moses, it was subjected to very great tests. He had no other mission on earth than to demonstrate in front of the Gentile peoples the existence and the law of the living and true God. 59. The patriarchs, the prophets, the seers, the leaders, the legislators, the judges and the kings were my emissaries, they were my spokesmen, my servants and instruments to manifest myself already in love, already in teachings, already in justice. Through them I gave proof of my power to other peoples. 60. 
Now that many centuries have passed, and that the splendor of that people as well as their judgment have remained distant, do not despise their history because by transferring it from the human sense to the spiritual sense, you can obtain infinite lessons and examples, with which you will end up understanding that that Israel is the symbol, the meaning figuratively speaking, the parable, and that the new Israel that I am forming means reality in its spiritual sense. 61. Look at that time when Israel, after achieving its liberation in Egypt and having conquered with her faith and her perseverance the promised land, she founded with her children her main city and gave it the name of Jerusalem. There she built a temple in honor of Jehovah, which was like a torch of faith for hearts. 62. Who would have told those people that they thanked the Father for having allowed them to rest in the land of promise, that in that city that he called holy, they would bring the Messiah to the scaffold? 63. You who are the new people who are struggling to free themselves from the power of Pharaoh, which is materiality, ignorance, fanaticism, idolatry, you begin the great crossing of the desert, but, when you already felt fear of the solitude, hunger and danger, you saw suddenly that a cloud descended on the mountain and that from the cloud gave off a ray of divine light, which, upon reaching your understanding, became a verb, a word that is wisdom. 64. This word is the law of God, the perfect law of love, justice and peace. It is also the new manna that sustains you and that will allow you to reach the new Jerusalem. 65. That city is no longer on this earth, it is not of this world. That city exists in the spiritual, but when inhabiting it forever and I come among you as Messiah, you will no longer crown me with thorns, nor give me vinegar, nor will you nail me to a cross. I will come among you as on that day when the crowds covered with their hands touched the ground. They sang hymns and waved their palms. And you will receive me in your hearts, celebrating the Master's triumphal entry into Jerusalem. 66. When this is, I will no longer return from your womb. 67. Will you understand the divine meaning of these revelations and the human meaning that you gave them? 68. Now I am passing among you, as I was also at that time, the moment is approaching to stop talking to you, and humanity has not felt my presence. 69. From this mountain, from where I send you my word and contemplate you, I will have to exclaim on the eve of my departure, Humanity, humanity, you have not known who you have had with you, as in the second while my death was near. I contemplated the city from a mountain and exclaimed through tears, Jerusalem, Jerusalem, you do not know the good you have had. It wasn't the world I was crying for. It was the spirit of humanity that was still without light and that would still have to cry a lot to reach the truth. 70. If everything that the people possessed in the first era had not been just a symbol, my justice omnipotent would have preserved intact that city with its temple and its traditions. But everything was destroyed so that only the law remained shining in the consciences and everyone understood that the kingdom truly of the spirit is not of this world. My peace be with you.